Wow, it takes a long time to go from the beginning of there to come to the middle over here. <laughs> um, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for allowing me to talk about something which is very important to me. And yes, I know we like to talk about social things and we want to involve others. But the first and more import most important person you want to involve always starts with yourself. Um, I've, I've talked about the issue of education, and this is the part where people change people's minds, and education is important. I've said this before, and I've been criticized for saying it, but I, I, I strongly believe it. You train monkeys, but you educate humans. And education is not just formal education. It doesn't necessarily mean that I need to go to university. Education happens consistently and constantly, and it never stops. It really never stops. The more you educate yourself, the more likely you can help create a better world. At the end of the day, that's what we want. We want a better world. The world we're living in, the, one of the reasons we're having a conference like this is because we are unhappy with the way the world has moved. And the way the world has moved has moved us in such a degree, to such a degree that we're starting to realize if we continue doing this, one day this thing is going to collapse on us. We don't want to realize that it's going to collapse. We don't. We want to believe that it can continue. It can continue going on for all, ever and ever, and it won't. And the, thing, the sad thing is, we have a duty, we have a moral duty to pass on something better to our children rather than worse. But we don't. And we come up with different ways of trying to rationalize in our head how we can do this. Now, there are two ways of changing human behavior, by the way. Either things are so sweet and nice that the person will change his or her behavior towards that just because they want to continue getting that reward, or it's so painful that they will try hard to avoid getting through that pain. They don't, want to experience, they don't want to experience the pain anymore. You can tell that this world is in a upheaval. <coughs> a few years ago when we had the financial crisis, and you had the, I believe they called the 1%, uh, what are they called? Um, I think it was the one percenters, where they were challenging that only 1% of the population of the world is actually benefiting versus the rest of the world which is not benefiting. And they would go out and they would uh, scream and shout and and sit and protest, what did I get? Did you see any change in behavior within the banking system? Did you see it within the business system? Did any of this thing affect people? And the answer is no. In my humble opinion, if you forgive me for saying this, but the answer is no. And the reason why you didn't see that change is because they were sitting and talking to people. They were trying to make themselves feel good. I'm doing something. I'm saying something, I'm protesting something. But the reality is the businesses, or the people in the businesses were thinking, well, yeah, fine, as long as you're outside the door and you're protesting, who cares? You're not in my door, you're not in my place, you're not in my, my, around me where you can affect me and hurt me. And if you want to change, I'm, I'm strongly suggesting, if you want to change and make a positive change, not a negative change. And the only positive change you, we can do is to keep on changing people's mindset in the business world to see that there is a reward for changing from caring, not just for yourself, but caring for the society. And at the end of the day, we're all part and parcel of the society. But how do we do that? Well, as it, for me, as I'm talking as an individual, and I cannot talk about how other people will react, but for me as an individual, the one thing I try to do is to say, okay, uh, I'm, lucky, I'm lucky to be in a position where I actually am um, part of a family business, and that family business has money. So I can do one of two things. I can either go and spend that money on luxury goods, which I do, or I can also take that money and spend it on the, the, the ideas and thoughts I want to push and promote, which I also do. So if there are cases where the situation where people, just small, small little things, um, uh, there might be a, an educational course the person needs to take. He can't fund it. You pay for it. Uh, there might be a, a university who wants to promote a new idea. You pay for it. I, I'm talking from in terms of business aspect, because I can afford to do that. 
But that doesn't necessarily mean everybody else can do that. But it's trying to help that change. Because what happens is when people start seeing this, and it's not done because I want my name out there. I don't really care. I, I do this because I strongly believe in education of humans and seeing them get a better life. That's more important than anything else I can think of. But I also have little children. And I want them to realize that the world is not all negative and that there is a good world out there and they have to contribute to that. They have to help make that change. You know, there's a saying, be the change you want to see. But how can I just, I, can, I, can I just tell my children, uh, do this and do this and do this and I can you know, sit in my home and never do anything? Well, the child is not stupid. The child will realize, you know, you're saying something but you do something else. So for me, it's very important, it's imperative to help push my children to see that things change. And because the best way of changing these things is through business. It's helping them understand through the business contacts, through the business world, you can help that change, that social change that we want to see. At the end of the day, if you think you're going to fight um, you know, what used to be called in the 70s, the man, it's not going to happen. Fighting him, fighting the, the institution, fighting the, the establishment is not going to work. And I'm not saying this because I don't think it's worth fighting. I'm just saying that this is the wrong uh, behavioral direction. I'm, I'm strongly, I strongly believe that if you want to do the change, do the positive change. Make them feel that there is positive balance towards that. Uh, in terms of, uh, by the way, some businesses really, really are they really think we're stupid as a collection, as a human. As humans, they really do believe that we're stupid in our mindset. I'll give you an example. I have two that I can, that I can think of. One, in, uh, when the Formula One stopped allowing uh, uh, hoardings of uh, advertising for cigarettes, uh, the company that used to be called Philip Morris, I, I can't remember, they, they've changed their name, the next year spent $150 million on good deeds all over the world. And then they spent $250 million advertising they spent $150 million. This tells you what they think of us. It does. Not necessarily the company, but the media company that had done that thinks very little of us as a collective, as a society. The, you want to see something that happens in a, every day? Um, I'm sure all of you, I, I don't know how many of you are from Switzerland uh, or sitting here, but for those who are foreigners who have come in from different countries and they go to a hotel and then they have little signs on the hotel that says, um, time? Or the mic? No, it became worse. Is it better? Yes. Sorry, um, not much I can do about technology, but everything else I hopefully can uh, make up for this minute and something that we lost. Oh yes, uh, the, the, when you go to a hotel, how many of you have seen with the sign that says, "Help us save the environment." By not reusing what you call it, by, sorry, by re reusing the towel or the sheet or something. And the thing is, you're not helping the environment, you're helping your bottom line. If you wanted to help the environment, don't build the hotel there in the first place. Leave the trees alone, leave the forest alone. But then how are they supposed to make money? But this is, this is the whole purpose. The idea is because people, sorry, corporations, certain corporations really think along those lines. I, I don't blame them, by the way. In some cases, they're put under a lot of pressure to produce a lot of money. But the thing is, how much money does it take to make you happy? 
If you have a billion, would that make you happy? What about a trillion? I don't know. What, what, take, what does it take to make you happy? The, the concern is, what do I want to, to leave my, as a legacy? What do I want to leave as a legacy? And if my business is there to harm, then honestly, I, I should shut down this business. But it's, it's so hard for people to understand that, to appreciate that money is not the end all be all. The purpose of money is to make other people's life better. It's a facilitator. It's to make other people enjoy life to, so that they can feel happier. But what do we do with money? You know, the, the more we have in our pockets, the happier we are, theoretically. Um, but that's not the case. Um, when I go, oh, my wife is going to hate me for the saying this, but when I go shopping with my wife, uh, and my, my wallet becomes lighter by the end of the shopping spree, I'm still happier. Why? Because my wife is happy. Even though I, I have technically traded you know, my money for whatever things that she enjoys. But that's the whole point. The whole point is to understand that I have a responsibility as a social human being, I don't have a responsibility towards just making money. Money has no value in and of itself. A business is there to create opportunities, employment, and hopefully open houses and doors for people. That's the whole purpose. I'm going to tell you a story that I, I, have, I had learned the story. Um, now, I don't know, I'm not trying to push, um, uh, it's, there's no religious um, uh, uh, agenda here, but it's a story which I just wanted to, to understand the mindset in terms of how we should be looking at things. Um, there was a gentleman, who, uh, there was a guy who kept, kept on uh, uh, coming to uh, the prophet Moses and insisting, please go tell your God I want to be rich. He kept on insisting, please tell God, I want to be rich, I want to be rich, I want to be rich. And every time he'll say, no, 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 not now, not now, later, later. Until finally he said, okay, fine, I'll do that. So the next time Moses meets God, he tells him, I, your servant so-and-so says he wants to be rich. So God repl replies and says, okay, tell him from this time to this time he will be rich. And he goes away. Okay. So next time Moses sees the guy, he tells him, oh, by the way, I spoke to God, and God said, from this time to this time, you'll be rich. And after that, you'll become poor. The, the, uh, the man said, thank you very much, and he walked away. And the time passes, and he reaches a point where the time should have, have been, the, the guy should have been poor again. And he sees him, and he's still rich. And this is, this is confusing. Like, how, how is it possible that the Almighty has said that this guy is going to be poor, and yet he's still rich? So the next time Moses meets uh, God, he asks him, you told me this person is going to be poor, but he's rich. And the response was, I opened, uh, so he built a house, this, rich, this poor man who became rich, he built a house with four doors. And these four doors are open. Anyone can come in and get shelter and food. I opened one door for him, he opened four doors. Now, does it make sense that the master should be, uh, so that the slave should be more generous than the master? The idea is, the idea here I'm trying to get is that the purpose of money is not to make money. But this is something we've lost. This is what has become part and parcel of how we think. The purpose of money is to help us move things in a direction where we want to get things done where it can actually have an effect, a positive effect on our society. And again, there isn't a better way I can think of other than using business. I know this sounds like an oxymoron, but to use the business to get to the point where you want to get to. And how do you get the business to do that? It is by positive reinforcement of what they want. They want to make money for the shareholders, supposedly. Fine. Show them how that, that money for the shareholders can actually be positive, be used within society. Now, uh, they're promoting recently, this, this, the, the idea that has been pushed down our throats 
is the promotion of CSR, Corporate Social Responsibility. I'm sorry, that's nothing other than marketing. It's pure marketing. A, a, a company, by its nature, is a dead entity. It has no soul. It's not a living entity. So how can I have morality to attach to it? But everybody within that organization and company does have a soul. And yes, he or she is responsible for his or her society. And yes, he or she should contribute to his or her society. So I don't expect corporations to do good things. I expect people to do good things. The ones who are making a lot more money in society should be giving it back. And giving it back not because they're being forced to give back, not be giving back because they want people to see that they're giving it back, but they should give it back because it feels good to give back, to make other people enjoy life as much as they are. This is the hard part for a lot of people to ab absorb and comprehend. If we don't do this, and I don't want to be an agent of doom here, but if we keep on doing, continue doing, imagine, just, just, just understand this. In, historically, we've been recording history for the last 4,000-ish years in different parts of the world. And in all those 3,800 years of them-ish, we've recorded that we as humans have focused just on sustaining ourselves and sustaining our society. And maybe for the last three, 400 years, and specifically for the last, last century, what has happened is such a dramatic shift that we are having a hard time absorb. You are talking about a population growth until the uh, world population, until uh, the beginning of last century, probably uh, two billion, I think, globally, the world. Now we're gonna hit, we're gonna go close to seven, and we're gonna hit seven, we're gonna go close to nine. It's not the resource that's the issue. Resources can be made, resources can be created, but it's sustainability. Can we sustain this? Because eventually what will happen is when you have a house that can't grow anymore and the people, number of people entering that house start to expand, there will be a time when people will start to hit each other. And they will be angry, why are you getting more than I'm getting? So in order to save that, before, I'm, not, I'm not advocating what you call it reduction in the population, because as I said, this world is big, it's huge. There's enough that can be, there's enough of abundance. But when you have companies, and I, again, I'm not criticizing company X or company Y, but when you have companies like in the fast food industry, where the number of food that's being thrown out every day, systematically, hotels, I'm sorry to say that, also in hotels, the amount of food that's being thrown out every day, it's wasted resources that somebody else would have benefit from, but they'll never see it. We need to help change that, create, create the environment for those companies to say, you know what, I don't need to produce so much what you call fast food. I need to produce enough to, make, to create uh, job opportunities and uh, serve, my, uh, serve my customers, sell my product. I don't need to do an overabundance of it. Same thing with hotels, same thing with restaurants. It's just, just a small sliver of, of businesses we can be in. The way you can save resources. Um, how many people, I mean, I mean I, I'll just, just, uh, I'm just going to end up on this, on, on this note. One of the worst resource abuse I've seen. In a certain airport, they've removed it now, but it was funny at the time. In a certain airport in the Middle East, I distinctly remember seeing a huge hoarding, a massive hoarding lit up with a small faucet and it said, please shut the faucet because you're wasting energy. And I'm thinking, am I the only one who sees the irony in this? You've spent, you, this, is, this is lit 24-7. The amount of energy gone into this is lit 24-7, is there, and you're telling me, close the faucet. Uh, it, it's, sometimes these things really, really irritate because you think it doesn't take much to think to how you can adjust 
and help the society and help yourself. At the end of the day, as I said, if you start, I know we have this tendency not to think along those lines, but if we start by being selfish first, think of ourselves, think of our families, think of our societies, and as our communities, and then our societies, we, we can achieve a lot, and achieve a lot by positive change rather than negative change, ne uh, positive emphasis. And I believe I'm told I should shut up. Um, I'm sorry if I've uh, taken um, more time than I should have, but I'm, I'm hoping I would have, I've just left you a message, and that message is we need to affect the change from ourselves. Thank you very much. <laughs>